Welcome to St. Michael's service on the second Sunday of Lent. We're still socially distanced, but gather as children of Abraham, descendants of many nations as God had promised him. We gather to worship God, maker of the earth and all the stars, the one who called us through Christ our Lord. We gather uniting in God's love. Let us worship God and let us pray. Creator God, when we see the night sky on a clear night, we fall silent in awe at the number of stars and the size of the universe. Yet you call us by name in love and we come to you. Praise be your love and your wonderful works. With Abraham, we might try to count the stars and wonder at your faithfulness and that of the many people who, like him, held on to faith and brought us to this point. Praise be your love and your work through all our ancestors. Yet with Peter, we rail at the injustice of good men and good women dying before their time, their dreams unrealised, their potential unfulfilled. We crave the courage of Jesus, the faith that enabled him to accept your will, but we are a long way from achieving that. Gracious God, as we travel again with Jesus on the road to suffering and death, we pray that his spirit may be with us. Help us to grieve and keep on going. Help us when we hurt and still bear the pain. Help us to question and go on trusting in your goodness and the ultimate victory of love. For you, Lord, have a po promised Abraham and all your faithful people your love and presence in good times and especially hard times. Remind us of your promises, O God, and of your calling to help you to fulfil them in the brief time that we are here on earth. May we play our part in the eternal struggle of light against darkness, goodness against evil, love against hatred, hope against despair, trusting you for all that we may not live to see. We praise you, O God, for the deep mysteries of our faith and ask you to keep us faithful to the one who has called us to leave everything to follow him. We ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing hymn 162, The God of Abraham Praise. The God of Abraham Praise, who reigns and throned above, Ancient of everlasting days and God of love. Jehovah, great I am, by earth and heaven confessed. I bow and bless the sacred name forever blessed. The God of Abraham praise at all supreme command. From earth I rise and seek the joys at his right hand. I all on earth forsake its wisdom, fame and power, and him my only portion make my shield and tower. He by himself has sworn, I on his earth append, I shall on eagle's wings up or to heaven ascend. I shall behold his face, I shall with power adore, and sing the wonders of his grace forevermore. There dwells the Lord our King, the Lord our righteousness, Triumphant o'er the world and sing the Prince of Peace. On Zion's sacred height his kingdom he maintains. 
and glorious with his saints in light forever reigns. The whole triumphant host give thanks to God on high, Hail Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they ever cry. Hail Abraham's God and mine, I join the heavenly praise. All might and majesty are thine through endless praise. One of the most famous characters of the Old Testament is Abraham whom we meet today as an example of a faithful person. Listen to what he might tell us of his life. You can find this story in Genesis 17. When I was 75, God spoke with me. He told me that he would bless me and that I would become the ancestor of a great nation. Sarai, my wife, was 65 then. We had never been blessed with children, but with God, anything is possible and I trusted him. God called us to leave our home in Haran, and we did. We've been traveling for 24 years now. We've had many adventures, good times and bad. One night, God spoke with me under the night sky and told me that my descendants would be as many as the stars. At my age and Sarah's age, it seems impossible, but with God, anything is possible, and I trusted him. I'm 99 now, and Sarai is 90, and we're still traveling. God spoke with me again last night and reminded me of his promise to make me an ancestor of many nations. God told me, that he was giving me a new name. No longer Abram, but Abraham. And Abraham means ancestor of a multitude. And Sarai is now to be called Sarah. So here we are, still traveling, still wondering what God has in store for us. I know that God's plans stretch far into the future that I will never see. And often I find myself questioning the possibility that Sarah and I will ever have a child. In years to come, when they tell our story, let them remember that in our old age, we were loved by and important to God who blessed us, surprised us and called us on. Romans chapter 4, verses 13 to 25. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for all ours also. 
It will be reckoned to us who believed in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Amen. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo a great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and reflections of our hearts be acceptable to our Lord and God. In recent times, few people fail to be inspired by Captain Tom, whose funeral took place yesterday. 
Aged 99, he walked miles in his drive and raised thousands of pounds for the NHS. His 100th birthday became a national celebration and Captain Tom received thanks and honours from the great and the good for his positive outlook on life and his willingness, even at his advanced age, to do his bit in a difficult time. Captain Tom, it seems to me, was like a modern day Abraham, a man of faith. Now, that does not mean he sat in prayer or made long confessions of faith all day long. He was after all, no monk, priest or minister, but he lived the principles he believed in all his life, right to the end. He could have sat down and said, I'm too old, time for others to walk on and take the load. Instead, he took his walking aid and did what he could with astonishing results. Abraham, we are told, was just like that. In spite of his age, he moved on, traveling where he had to go, and not losing hope in spite of his age, increasing all the time. Age, mind you, was never a barrier for God, whether young or old. God called a young Samuel to speak for him and came after all among us as a vulnerable baby. And Abraham and Sarah's advanced age did not mean that it stopped God's purpose. What matters is our listening to God, our walking, traveling with the source of love and life all our life. This does not mean that our journey in faith is one always of ease and mere happiness. God is not inviting us onto a pleasure trip, but invites us onto life's adventurous journey, a mixed bag of highs and lows and all sorts in between, but in good company, even and especially when the going gets tough. Peter, though, is outraged. Peter and the other disciples had left their homes and their work to follow Jesus, to witness and learn from this amazing man who was so close to God and was teaching of God and his kingdom in new and wonderful ways. They had great hopes. They were certain that at last God would sort out this broken world, the injustice, the powerful's domineering and uncaring, the lawbreakers. So Peter and the others cannot believe their ears when Jesus says that he has to suffer, that their great hope may have to die before rising to new life. How could they accept the premature end to all they were hoping for? Peter takes Jesus aside and tries to give him a pep talk on campaign and marketing strategy, I imagine. He had, after all, a business background. But Jesus gives him the mother of all rebukes. Get behind me, Satan. Get back in line. Now, notice this. Jesus does not reject Peter, but tells him to get back behind him, ready to follow the place of learning for all pupils. And so Jesus teaches Peter and all people who are behind him. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. No advertising agency would recommend this as an attractive slogan to encourage people to buy into the Christian message. And yet, this is at the center of being a disciple, a learner of the things of God, a friend and sibling of Jesus. Christian faith does not lead to the abandonment of the world and all its joy or pain. Neither does it lead to isolated self-fulfillment of individual lives in ivory towers. Instead, faith leads into real life, including all life can throw at a person, good or bad. But we will never travel this road alone, but in the company of God's family, and best of all, in the company of the crucified and risen Lord, 
who will lead us to the new life God has in store for us. This was the faith Paul praised in Abraham, our ancestor in faith. This was the faith Janusz Korczak, Jane Haining, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Albert Schweitzer, Mother Teresa and so many others lived, following the self-giving love of their Lord. Can we take up our crosses? What is it? It will be different for each one of us. Take it up though, and hold on to faith, the trust that God will help us walk with our cross. Do we need to be afraid? And do we have to move around all miserable and suffering? Not necessarily. We might be afraid, we might be miserable at times, but we can count our blessings and give glad thanks for the many good things God has entrusted to us and rejoice in them. God calls us to follow Jesus who lived love unfailingly let us this Lent try to follow love, live the love of God in all our thoughts, words and actions. And Levin thought of the cross as a tree to be climbed. She wrote, cross tree. A tree is something you have to get to the top of. Jesus climbed his with some assistance and stayed there, fixed by love, to set us free from the mad rush to dominate our fellows. Take up your cross, he said, and follow me. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Lord, bless all the gifts we are bringing today, that they may help to build your kingdom and alleviate need and glorify your holy name. Amen. Thank you for all your giving and helping to support the work of the church and here the work of St. Michael's. Let me remind you that this year our Lent appeal will go to a charity called People Know How, who have a project uh, called All Aboard, a canal boat project in cooperation with our neighbouring parish of Polworth. The boat has been ordered and will provide a fun space for young and old to celebrate life and build up the community, especially important as we come out of lockdown. It was such a long time for us to be separated. Our contributions will help maintain and run the boat or organise events. Thank you for your generosity. Moira, our treasurer, will see to it that your donations will go to the right place. Last Monday, Fair Trade Fortnight started. And thank you for all you've done to support Fair Trade in the past two years. They've been busy. They've been asking government and the chocolate industry to lead the way to achieve living incomes for cocoa farmers. In order to do this, they presented a large petition to 10 Downing Street. And the Secretary of State for International Development, Alok Sharma, replied, praising the campaign and pledging to champion the fair trade movement. Inspiring stories of uh, the cocoa farmers were also shared online with millions and in communities and at events across the United Kingdom where they were possible. Waitrose and John Lewis converted their confectionery range to contain 100% fair trade cocoa. And Lidl have launched the first, their first own brand fair trade chocolate bar. We are working to achieve a long-term structural change in the cocoa industry. This will take years rather than a, fort, a fair trade fortnight or two. Our fight will continue. St. Michael's has just been granted fair trade status thanks to your long-term support and the dedication of Sheila and Bill with our fair, tra fair trade stall. Well done them. Do place your orders with them, especially for your Easter eggs. And if you have no children who may need an egg with an Easter story, you could buy one anyway and give it to Alex Anderson, one of our members, who will hand the Easter eggs into the sick kids hospital for the children who have to stay in hospital over Easter. And do, if you have a computer, do Google the Fair Trade Fortnight website, because there you can find more stories and take part in online events to help us understand more about the important work of fair trade. The website says, farmers behind our food are on the front line of the climate crisis, but there's hope. Join a global community during fair trade fortnight 2021 for a free festival of online events and activities to entertain, educate and inspire us all to choose the world we want to see. There is a quiz, there are talks, there are virtual tours, music and discussions. Surely something for everyone. Whatever you do, again, a big thank you for your supporting the poorest farmers in the world by buying any fairly traded goods. Now let us pray for others and for ourselves. Great God, maker of heaven and earth, we give thanks for life in all its glorious diversity. We give thanks for our homes, 
food, friends and neighbours near and far. We give thanks this fair trade fortnight for the many farmers producing food and treats of coffee and cocoa, wine, sugar for our cakes, olives and raisins and so much more. We are grateful for the many stories entrusted to us of people living faithful lives guided by you. We are glad to know their hopes and dreams, their joys and sorrows. We are grateful for your promises and the extraordinary ways in which they came to be fulfilled. We are glad for the story of Jesus in whose life our lives are reflected as they are not yet but may one day become. Lord, we pray for all who find themselves today at a sticking point in their story, not sure which way to go, not sure if the old signposts are still reliable. Those, we're praying for those who are finding it hard to go on hoping and waiting for your promises to be kept. And so we pray for all who hoped for children once and now no longer do for those who dreamt of who they might become and what they might achieve and now just keep on keeping on. We pray for those who are old in years and need to know that their life has a purpose, for all who lose their lives too soon and for all who rage at life's unfairness. We pray this fair trade fortnight for all affected by climate change especially those who lack the resources of education or finance to cope and find new ways forward. Lord, we pray for all who are sick today and those who are coming close to death. We pray for their families, carers and medical staff. We pray for the bereaved. Lord, be near to them and comfort them. We pray for all who educate the young ones in school or still at home, teachers, parents, grandparents. Pray for youth leaders and educators. Lord, be near to them and guide them and their charges. We pray for all in power in industry or communities. We pray for politicians and lawmakers, councillors, group leaders and planners, who have the task to lead us into new community life. Lord, be near to them and give them wisdom. Loving God, you are not just the author of this story's world, but you are one of us, one with us in all life's twists and turns. Remind us of that when, we, when the way is hard, when we have to carry our cross and faith is shaky. But remind us too of your love when the clouds lift and the sun begins to shine again and life is good so that we can, can share our joy with you and give you thanks and praise which you preserve always. To you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be all glory, Lord and honour, now and forever. Amen. Tree of life, an awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with every morn. Still you rise with every morn. See that dies to rise in glory, may we see ourselves in you. If we learn to live your story, we may die to rise anew. We may die to rise anew. We remember truth once spoken, love passed on through act and word. Every person lost and broken, where's the body of our Lord? Where's the body of our Lord? Gentle Jesus, mighty Spirit, come and flame our hearts anew. We may all your joy inherit if we bear the cross with you. If we bear the cross with you. Christ, you lead and we shall follow 
stumbling though our steps may be. One with you in joy and sorrow, we the river, you the sea. We the river, you the sea. With thankfulness for those gone before in faith and in anticipation for the part you will play in times to come, may we all go with the assurance of God's covenant, enlivening, guiding, and strengthening us, knowing that we are part of God's story. And the blessing of God Almighty, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.